<laughs> you know, I've just gotten home from a long day. Uh, I haven't even changed out of my clothes from work. And all day, all I've been getting from every corner of the internet, whether it's on my Gmail or on the website or on YouTube or on Twitter, is all these exclamations about Voltron's elbows and how I missed that crucial joint talking about the sword pose when I did my review two days ago. And um, I know that when we're in the midst of, you know, some sort of iconic piece like Voltron or Star Wars or Thundercats or whatever it is, that everybody has the answer and everybody kind of piles on trying to get the answer uh, correct. Uh, you know, are you going to post an update? Are you going to do this? Are you going to do that? Well, let's keep something in perspective here, okay? I've been around a lot of Voltrons in my life, okay? A lot of them. I've invested a lot of money in Voltrons because Voltron is my cartoon from when I was a kid. Like, I've said it before. There was Star Wars and then there was Voltron, now Beast King Goliath, and uh, that's never changed. But I don't speak Japanese, and I certainly don't read it, okay? Not that I willfully don't read it. I can't read it. I lack the ability to read Japanese characters, okay? So what that means is when I'm looking at an instruction manual from Japan and I'm looking at the photographs, I don't always pick up on everything on the first go, and I'm trying to get that video out for you guys. So, uh, yeah, I've never had a Voltron that does that before. Um, why would I expect a Voltron to do that? Why would I expect the red and green lion's elbow joints to, you know, ex extend? Uh, I wouldn't. Um, and when I finally did, you know, uh, do the move that you guys were telling me about this evening when I got home, I had to pull so tightly on those things that I thought you guys were mistaken for a minute because it felt like I was going to rip them apart. Uh, same thing with the shoulder locks that, you know, you all were saying, oh, no, it locks. You just have to use like a tool or something to get the right leverage. Well, yeah, you do. And I can't say that that's bad from the perspective of, you know, having precision machining and precision engineering. That's great. But when you're trying to put it together for the first time and it's resisting, you also don't want to break your $300 collector piece. So you're also not going to force anything. So I wasn't going to willfully just start forcing latches into his shoulders uh, when they didn't want to go. Um, I appreciate that everybody jumped in and said, hey, you know, his arms really do, you know, work and, and whatever. But just to let you know, it's a combination of things. It's not just that you have to extend um, his uh, elbows. You also have to uh, extend the hands or the, the heads from the necks again. So you end up getting sort of the, the lion look on his arms when the lion's head should be butted right up against the wrists. You, you basically are, are, are affecting accuracy that way in order to get these these uh, arms to hold the sword in uh, a few different ways. Um, and so my, my comment from the original video still stands, which is that because of the way that the animation uh, was sort of slipshod here and there in the original Beast King Goliath, uh, sometimes Voltron looked, you know, sort of chunky like this, and sometimes Voltron looked very felt and slim and narrow like the Toynami one does. It just depends on what shot you're looking at and what action Voltron was taking at the time, what animation team was on what episode, because there's definitely an A team and a B team to all those episodes. I, I, even with this added mobility, I still say it's up to preference. I know some people say that the Toynami looks anorexic. Would I choose this one over the Toynami? Yes, I would. Melinda, who's more artistic, she likes the Toynami more than this one, as the robot. Um, and it's all up to personal preference. There's no, that was the whole point of the last video, is there's no definitive Voltron at this point. This one and the Popey are definitely in the top two, depending on what your priorities are um, for me. But I can't speak for somebody else. I can't speak for you or Melinda or anyone. I'm sure there's people out there that like action figures with their Voltrons. 
But I just thought it was really funny that what it boiled down to today was everybody arguing about the, the ability to extend Voltron's weenus. And yes, that's a slang term for the skin that hangs off of your elbow. Weenus. So, yeah. Uh, Bondi's Soul of Chagokin Voltron has an extending weenus. Weenus. <laughs>